Hey, welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to do a sculpt messing around. By the way, I started with one of these Dynamesh spheres. I think it was this one. Um, but yeah, this isn't a tutorial by the way, because I'm not some advanced sculptor, but I do like dinking around in this. It's fun. Um, so yeah, just kind of, uh, going to show you a bit of what I do when I'm just trying to loosen up and make something creepy. So I imagine it's going to have some kind of face. Probably should work on the body first, but I'll, I'll do this. So we go to the move brush, start dragging this creature concept out and around. I like using Dynamesh because it allows me to just kind of add pieces and you know, grow the the forms and just drag and re-Dynamesh it so that kind of helps. So you can even go like uh, clay build up and I could even say well I want there to be an arm right about here. Reverse that selection. Move it outward. Down a little bit. Go back to draw. Tiny mesh it. Yeah. It's a flying, flying wheel. Something. It's a weird butt. Okay, so. I really don't have any idea of what it is I'm going to create. I just, again, I want something that looks kind of creepy and crazy. And I know you should probably have a lot more of a distinct idea going into something like this. I, there are times I will create like an extensive mood board and do all that. Uh, this just isn't one of those times. So this is more of one of those, I'm going to wing it and whatever we get, we get kind of times. I think like maybe like a creepy spine coming off the back in some way. So I'll get that in. You know, I like to get ideas early in. It's almost like I'm sketching. So I'll go to like the damn standard and uh, I will just sketch, you know, some ideas. If nothing else, I'll just kind of drop in some textures and figure out stuff as I go. I give them an extra set of eyes. Always makes things look a little more alien or monstrous when they have eyes that aren't, you know, as typical. Like I like the ones too where they have like eye sockets but no eyes. That's kind of cool. I mean basically just like more of a skull. Uh, what comes to mind there is uh, Kong Island. Those were some pretty cool creatures. Okay. We could do that. We could make this like a little bit like along those lines, give it like more of a snake like body. Creepy fish design. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just kind of realized I grabbed the side. That's funny. Okay, so he's just kind of laying down and on his belly. No, oh, let's, let's change that. Um, hmm. Let's do, let's go back. Cause that's not what I meant to do. I thought I had this area selected. Make the tail look a little unique. And I hate when I grab that focal shift instead of the other one. Drives me nuts. Okay. That's probably why I do majority of my work is drawing because I can only do this for so long and I get a bit frustrated with the interface here. But it's uh, it's still pretty awesome software. I mean, you can generate ideas so quickly and so 
uh, uniquely to, you know, I feel like there's certain ideas that I only get from sculpting and then vice versa, I guess, with drawing, but I don't know, sculpting is just, there's a whole other dimension to it, obviously. A third dimension. Okay, so let's see here. I think that's starting to look pretty creepy already. Um, the tail looks pretty plain. And I'm thinking like some little, I feel like some little grabbers off the belly. That'd be kind of creepy. So like, and I would probably do this with another sub-tool, but let me show you what I'm thinking here anyways. Actually, you know what? Let me get a few of these in all at once. And I'd probably look at reference of, say, maybe like a crab or something like that. Aquatic life is always great for creepy ideas. To me, aquatic life and sex would be the best. And then I'm going to pull these down and stretch them inward. So they kind of start to bend like that. And I know there's a way to like just grow the selection and keep that bend going. I don't know how to do that. So... All I would do is probably get it to about right there and bring that bend in a little more. And it's, it's almost stretching the polygons too much. So let me release this, redynamesh it. But yeah, I would do something like that. But to me, I feel like I could do that a whole lot more effectively with another piece. But let me see if, uh, if this is even worth it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess another way, and I need to really start practicing this, is where you isolate parts of the sculpt. So um, I think I could get in there and make those work, but I want those to be like sharp, jagged points, and I could even do like some kind of bottom mouth. He could have two mouths, you know. Um, or they could come out and look long enough, and then he's got the big ones, and I could put some big hooks on this one here. So that, you know, that's how he brings it up to his mouth. Because I think that orifice on his belly look kind of gross. I don't know if I want to do that. Um, I mean, the purpose of this one is to look gross. But some ideas are just too gross. The stomach. And I feel like it'd be cool to see, like, you know, the bone structure. Some ribs or something right here. Again, I, a lot of times I'll just kind of draw on these different textures just to get some ideas going. Get some wrinkles here, some kind of almost human-like anatomy, but not, you know, not human, just some musculature and some definition in this arm, make it look strong, you know. I feel like this one tooth up the front would look kind of neat. So again, this is just kind of a scribble at this point, but I am looking at these as ideas. Let me show you what I mean there. So let me pull up into this and then let's go to inflate. Kind of push some of this out a little bit. I feel like I'm going to give him some kind of eyes here. We could bring the, um, if there was a nose, I don't really see there being a nose, but maybe there is. But we could bring it above the eyes. So all those little choices start to... Uh, make this thing look more, I don't know if I want to say believable, not believable, but more detailed, more thought out. Things like that. Yeah, it's looking pretty creepy, I think. I'm thinking like even like a spike or maybe a, maybe a thinner, like almost parasite looking end of the tail. Isn't there one called a snake hook? Let me, I don't use that one. Let me try that. Snake hook, where are ya? It'll probably be S, right? So B, S, snake sphere, snake hook. Snake hook two. Huh. Sculptures mode, I didn't want to use that, but. Yikes, no, that didn't work. Go to my geometry, so it took off probably Dynamesh right now, it's still on. Was I not in Dynamesh? You know what, you probably have to turn, um, probably do this at the end. So what I would do, you know what? Yeah, I'm probably gonna do it at the end, but I'm gonna test it real quick. 
So if we go to, as a subtool master, no, transform, activate symmetry. Now I'll try it. Yeah, see, and what it's, I think what it's doing is probably would work better with the higher polygon count. Let me subdivide it, but it still works. Yeah, so you just have to be careful when you start getting these edges like this. But I would, yeah, I would actually do that more towards the end, I believe. Um, especially because it's not in symmetry. But you could do all sorts of neat little spikes. Make them look really dangerous. I don't know, it seems like it's working pretty good overall. Not getting that point I want, but here's a couple versions of that one. last one went wacky. That's pretty neat though. Oops. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna go back because that's something I think I would add more at the end. I try to work in symmetry for as long as possible. So where were, where were I? Where were I? Right there. And um, let's go ahead and work on the face a little bit more. I'm gonna up the geometry for the Dynamesh. Cause I feel like that's all the big, the big shapes that I wanted to uh, get across. So let me go ahead and redynamesh that. We're at a uh, half a mil for polys, so that's not that's not bad at all. Um, something like this would use a lot more. So I'm gonna go to clay build up and just gonna build out some design to this face right here. Kind of like some of the bumpiness that's already there, so I want to try to retain that. And all this was pretty random. And so that's one of the things I really like to do with this stuff. I don't, I don't, like I mentioned, I don't always go in with a very distinct idea. And I love it when you don't have a great idea, but then through the process, ideas sort of develop. I love it when a plan comes together. That's a really bad impersonation of, uh, Hannibal, not Hannibal Lecter. I think it was Hannibal, right? A-Team, God, that's pretty bad. I was a huge A-Team fan when I was a kid. No, I don't even know. I'm pretty sure it was Hannibal. All right, so he's just using that damn standard to kind of sculpt out some of these shapes. I feel like it would look neat if he's got this kind of crooked mouth. Uh, keep in mind too, when you get you know, you're kind of chiseling this out, right? You can also hold Alt, and you can chisel out the other edges a little bit, right? You can blend them with Shift, but that obviously looks kind of, you know, too even, right? So you can go Move, and you can pinch those together. Another way is to um, use the... Um, is it inflate reverse? Let me see here. Let's try that. Yeah, so it's kind of growing them together a little bit. I think I like that better. Inflate just the front of this. Still, I don't like the the smoothness, you know, like this, to me, this thing's got to, well, we're going to do some asymmetry stuff at the very end, but um, also, there just needs to be, like, some bumpiness in here. It can't be too smooth. It's got to be textured and bumpy and imperfect and you know, pictures like deep sea creature, right? He's not going to have, like, really good skin. Not sitting, he's not down there doing his skincare routine before every meal. After every meal, I don't know when you're supposed to do it, but before bed, maybe. So again, lots of little texture. I feel like that part looks too evenly. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't look right. This this bottom part right here. 
but we'll come back to it. It's this is another thing is like I bounce around a lot, and I think that's part of my my process for this that helps me out because if I sit there in one spot and I keep trying to muscle through it, sort of, um, I feel like I get a little bit I lose some of the energy for what I'm doing. But if I keep moving around that energy going I can generally stand these pieces for hours and hours and days until I need food all right let's see clay build up and patch this little area right here I don't know if I want these eyes completely smooth I feel like it has a little bit of a creepy vibe because of that though like no eyelids you know just these big dark but smooth uh, eyes again with the damn standard okay all through here get these nice little wrinkles I could do like this eyelid on the very edge coming around it that might look kind of neat So I'm holding Alt to do that reverse ridge. Comes in really handy for this type of stuff. I think it's a good start on the face. I mean, it definitely needs a lot more, but it's it's a start. So a lot of times too, I'll draw in with this uh, damn standard, and then. Um, I'll smooth it out and then come back like it's it's kind of a build up of texture and ideas. I like these wrinkles that go across the anatomy as well. It makes it look more believable. So I like some I like putting them in multiple directions. Lots of little wrinkles, lots of little bumps. Yeah, creepy. Occasionally holding the alt um, key and bringing some, you know, raised aspects. And in here, I'm going to want a lot of like tighter wrinkles. So that's the other thing. You don't want it all evenly spaced out because it kind of kills the the scale. I think a little bit. And plus, if the pattern is too consistent all the way through the creature or whatever it is you're doing, it just uh, it's not as interesting. But if there's some, you know, big bold areas, some, you know, areas with no detail, it just think about it in terms of focal points. You want to be aware of when you're adding the same pattern. Like if I was to sit here and do this, say this pattern looked really cool, which I don't think it does yet, but say it did. If I did it over the whole thing, it would lose its luster. It wouldn't be cool anymore. Uh, but if I used it just in the right spots, it uh, amplifies its coolness tenfold all right yeah I like that um, so far I do want to bring out that spine though. I want that to be a really creepy kind of spine so what I'm gonna do here let's go back to the move brush start bumping this up and I'll probably do a selection and a pull because that's that's probably the best way so you gotta you gotta look at it in terms of or I think anyways I'm no pro here but you got to look at it in terms of like when you're moving these areas around do you want this this round or this hump so like if you look at the mesh and I got it a bit too dense but you know look at the way the mesh goes over this area right well if you want that then the move tool is great and you're so much you can achieve with you know scaling it down and going back and forth you can get some various effects with that um, but if you don't want that little mound kind of effect and round over then that's when you're selections are you know more handy stuff like this right here so you can go like this all right so i'm gonna get the spine going make some of these a little bit bigger in the middle like that right maybe a little one right there let me do that scale this down 
Okay, and then I'm going, you can also, by the way, you can hold, is it shift, you tap on it. Let's see, that make an effect. Maybe it's control. Control, tap on it. Yeah, see how it's fading it? So you can blend the selection off right there. I don't want that. I want a more defined selection. Command Z to go back, Command Shift Z to go forward. I'm going to hold control, tap once, and go to move. And where's my, where's my gizmo? Let's wait down there. You can unlock it, move it where you want. Zoom back in, make sure to relock it, and then pull up, and maybe back, uh, maybe a little. I'm just going to pull up. I can adjust these as I, as I want. And you can also, you know, you could scale these down. They're going to pull inward like that, which got, looks kind of neat. So just, you know, look at these different effects. Um, doo -doo -doo, see what you get. But I think maybe scaling it in, because it gives it that neat little bend inwards I like what it did to the front and yeah I like I could turn those into spikes real easy so I'm gonna leave that go back to draw uh, let go of the selection hit F to look at the model full size so I could probably work with that and make that look pretty cool but I'm gonna try something else as well so I'm gonna take the mask pen again I'm gonna scale up my brush now I'm gonna go right through the middle here like this, oh, it's kind of stuttering. Imagine it doing that, but I'm gonna go right through the middle here. I'm gonna scale this down even further now. Hold control, it's gonna add to the selection. And I wanna widen it out up here. So pretty wide, actually I'm a little wider. I want it wider here and I want to thin out down the tail. this nice and thin and keep bumping back the uh, brush size go right down the tail there I can also go control alt and I can go the other way and clean it back up so control by itself adds control alt subtracts same thing I could come over here control and I could bump these out on the side just a little bit give it a little bit more of a a spine like design. I think that'll look cool, hopefully. There and there, and there. Again, bring that to a point right about here. Alright, let's see what we get there. I'm going to hit Control Tap to invert it. I probably could soften up the selection on this one. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that. So I'm going to hold Control and tap it a couple times. So that softens up the uh, selection, kind of like a Gaussian blur of some kind. I'm going to go to Move, pull that upward. Again, I'm going to pull that in just a little. Oh, I must have pulled uh, the wrong way. Let me try that again. Let's go back to the side view. Or you know what? I think I like it like that. That, that gives me the data that I need to work with. So I'm going to let go of the selection, hit F, and so now I've got that nice little mound, ridge. And you know, I kind of think about things like this, and obviously this is in a lot of like fantasy kind of stuff. I almost picture like, what if this thing was super massive and these resembled islands? Wouldn't that be kind of cool? And then he like sits there and uh, lures people in with the islands on his back, maybe a big island, and then jumps up and takes down the whole ship, whatever, you know, just, I don't know, almost would be kind of cool, I guess, but then, uh, let's do brush, clay build up, and so now we could, you know, play around with this, say, well, what if these came down, and blended this way into the body, why not like this, Could do the same thing right here, maybe. Obviously, you could pull some uh, spine reference, but you can sort of wing it. This is a creature design. 
Again, for me, this is a lot of times just a way to have fun, relax, and come up with ideas that I might not otherwise come up with. I'm holding all. I can cut into these shapes, create some little pockets in here maybe. Remember, it's doing this on the other side as well. I haven't flipped over and looked at it, but it should be. See how you, just by building these ridges, you can do all sorts of neat little detail. Oop, gotta hold Alt in that area. I can hold Alt through here. And I think all of this just starts to make it look and feel more interesting. Let's check it from a distance. And then we could even take this and say, okay, it's too even across. Let's, let's go ahead and mess with that a bit. So I'm gonna make the brush size a bit bigger. Grab this area, push some of this down, maybe make the this point higher, like that. This point a little lower, a little bit higher right there. And again, that just gives it a little bit more of an interesting vibe, I think. So it's not too awfully repetitive. I'm gonna go ahead and redynamesh that as well. And we're at, we're still at 500,000 polys, which I think is fine for this. I do want to add a more interesting tail though. I'm not done with that spine probably, or the definitely not the ribs. And really the ribs are, you know what, these are going in the wrong way. No, they're just not working yet. Let's start with a clay buildup. I guess they could go that way. This is a creature design. I quiz That's the wrong way. Ribs would go the other way, wouldn't it? Which, I don't know, for, would they go the other way? I don't know. This is where I probably should have reference, but I'm just going to try to get this rib-like effect going. So right now I'm raising that material, All right? Okay, and go to the Damien Standard. Push some of these areas back. Smooth that a little bit. And I can hold all and I can bring out some ridges to the bones. And then keep pushing back the pockets in between them. And also, I can move these around a little bit because they look a little too, I don't know, they don't have enough curve to them or something. Something's not right about those. I need to do those a couple times before I figure it out. Okay, let's go ahead and work on that tail for a minute. I'll come back to that. Okay, so the tail, what I'm thinking is almost like a, I think it's a bit of a dragon-like tail. So right here, I'm going to bring this out like this. Like that. Okay, and then also I want to flatten that out quite considerably. Probably wouldn't hurt to have the um, polygon uh, mesh visible. Sometimes you can see things a bit better with that on, I've noticed. I'm really just trying to thin that out. Um, another one you can use, but I'm, yeah, let me just do that, is the, uh, what is it, trim dynamic? Let's try 
kind of flatten it out a bit with this brush. And I feel like the polygons are distracting at that point. Yeah, it's working. I'll have to smooth it out a little bit and build in some ridges. There's people that get really good with this and the damn standard brush and do like some really neat like tech modeling. I, I need to practice that. I've been wanting to practice that actually. I haven't done as much of that. Yeah, it's starting to get there. See, I kind of like that that line right there. Um, let's see if we retain it when we dynamesh it. Yeah, it's, it gets a bit more rigid, but that'll work. Yeah, I think I kind of like that. And then let's just try moving it out a little bit more. I'm going to check that from a distance. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. And I could go... I probably will add like more fins off of it, make it look even cooler you know because it actually looks too small for the body of the creature um, and then I'm not digging the shape right here it needs to be thinned out I want it to be like all belly okay and I think now we'll work on the front arms a bit more and I also need to come up with some kind of idea for the sides here. Maybe some scales would be cool. Um, it's just too plain right there. Um, it could even be like some rocky kind of texture. Or you know what? It could be uh, some growth of different uh, creatures living off the side of it. And that would really help to convey a sense of scale. Because, you know, right now this thing could be little. It could be like a little parasite, right? But then as soon as you have all these smaller things growing on the side you could really make this thing look massive. It's always uh, size relative. Spatial, spatial relationships, I think that's what that means, but maybe not. Google, Google it and let me know. All right, so, um, yeah, I kind of like the texture of the face. I mean, I could definitely use some more detailed textures for that, and I need to get the roundedness of the eyes just right. Look a bit lazy there. But overall, I think it's working. So. I want these like spikes, it's, they need to either be claws or just curved spikes. Um, you know what, let's try that snake hook one more time. Where was it? It was B, S, H, until I never use this one. And it says better in sculptress mode, which I think is weird. I've never, never used that one, I guess. I mean, I've used Sculptress, that's actually what led me to get ZBrush, to tell you the truth, but then they then they introduced it into ZBrush, which I thought was pretty crazy. Yeah, see, I kind of even like that. I just like, I just got to make it look like those are really pliable, bendable, um, which they're almost there. I could probably just do it with the, the damn standard. Uh, and have it look where he can, you know, it's more of an elbow kind of right here. And then I'd want to add another joint right through here. Again, lots of littler, smaller wrinkles through here. shape right here though once I that's what's weird too something can look entirely on point with 3d and then you'll see it from a different angle and all of a sudden it's it's not working <laughs> you gotta you know like oh, I gotta totally re sculpt that part but the beauty of it is generally you can you can really achieve a lot pretty quickly um, this is much faster 
sculptors than I, but I'm having fun learning it. I'll tell you that it's, it can be pretty interesting at times. I love the ability to create wrinkles and, and depth and dimension faster. Something about it is so gratifying. You know, all these little textures. I feel like those things up there can be sharpened as well. Um, I think I'm going to add even more geometry though. Just a little bit more. Yeah, see, I don't like how he's got to be right to a point. It's got to look dangerous. I do want to leave a couple flat though. So again, that's that comparison thing where if I sharpen them all up, then it loses that intensity for those few that look really dangerous. And a couple flat ones almost look, I don't know, it almost makes you feel like this thing's even more prehistoric. I don't know if that's just me or what, but, but yeah, I would make a couple of these more sharp and then leave the rest to be, um, a little bit more blunt, I think that would look cooler. But it's all just opinions, right? Some people are gonna say, no, you should have made them all sharp, or we're thinking you moron. And to those people I say, maybe, maybe you're right. It's all just a matter of opinion. Gotta be a better way to do this though. I know there is. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah, see, I kind of like that. I feel like those ones in the middle, you know, even if I don't leave them completely straight, like maybe I just bump them up a different way, I'm just not gonna make them as sharp. And then obviously I still got these bottom things. Um, oh yeah, so the one part I wanted to show you, you know what, I do feel like maybe these little Little thumb kind of hooks. Let me try that with the snake hook brush. But first, I want to make sure the shape is the way I want it. I feel like I need to adjust the way it tapers down a little bit. Yes, yeah, so there's this whoop, whoops, there's this weird bump right about there that I'm not digging. Yeah, let's say that's good enough. And the rest I can detail with texture. Uh, I'm gonna go back to that snake hook brush. One of these days I'm gonna remember the shortcut, but not today. Let's go to about here. Nope. So let's scale this down. I imagine the focal shift intensity helps as well. So play around with those variables. That looks silly. Yeah, I'm not digging that as much as I thought. Uh, I think I could add that in with another piece, but I don't know. It kind of looks, kind of looks good with just the spikes, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll leave that. But then now I'm wondering if I should try to bring these out with the, the snake hook brush and save myself some time if I can. Yeah, those actually don't look that bad, really. I kind of even like that bump off to the side. Like they just kind of grew that way. Let's redynamesh it. Um, make sure that's not causing some funky 
polygons in there. Just kind of smooth them out. Yeah, and I could still adjust those because I feel like they need to be more creepy. Like they got to curve over more. Maybe stay closer to the belly. And again, I got to show that range of movement because if they're just like these stiff bones that come down, it's almost like counterproductive, right? Like just wouldn't be that good of an idea for the fish to have evolved that way. He probably wouldn't have made it. Suffer a lot of belly injuries. So let's try, hmm, let's just go crazy with the hooks. Yeah, that's too much. All right, so now, try something with the scales. I want to see, I know there's better ways to do this, but I just want to try something over here. Um, so if I was to draw some scales, again, this probably isn't the way to go about this. Just want to test it. Say something like this. I think I messed up the pattern there. And then I'm gonna try the inflate. Does that work or no? Nah, all right, just curious. Blend that back, actually let me go back. Just do these little bumps here. Yeah, so actually I don't even think that looks bad. I know there's custom brushes for this. I need to learn how to make them. Because that's, uh, you know me, if there's a way to make a custom brush, I'm all over it. I mean, I could just painstakingly do that. Looks aquatic. Didn't take that much time, really. So maybe I'll do that. I'm not sure yet. I do feel like these ribs are a bit too even and boring. Let's work on that a little bit. Scale this down, hold Alt. Also, texture along the other side. So, we could add like these little wrinkles and skin texture going the other way. Spine. 
you know, there's times I do this, I really just kind of zone out and scribble and doodle and see what I come up with. I'm so not sure about the scales there. show you how it isolate these areas and edit these so I feel like these are close but then you know they're kind of hard to get to right so uh, the way that I found is that if you use control shift so you can isolate just that you can flip it um, so what I would probably do is just go right through about here yeah so now I've got just those and it's a bit easier to get in here and quite a lot easier actually. Still got to make sure you don't grab the belly, um, which I think there's a way to let me see if I can e even deselect the middle. Yeah, so I'm holding control, shift, alt, and that's how I get the red box and I can keep taking away, but it's not doing anything. The mesh is all still there. Just a way to get rid of, oh, I don't know why that pops up. I must have hit something I didn't mean to hit. I often do that in this software. Control Shift Alt. I want to get right to just the little what now look like udders. They're not udders. Believe me, they're not. Okay, so and I could take that even further, really. But I don't know if I want to. Let me see. Let me get rid of all this. Go right down to just these two. And I'll use these as my uh you know, my benchmark or whatever. I'll get these the way that I'm kind of imagining. And so I just want these to be a bit thinner. And then I want there to be a bend. And this is what I find to be tricky is, and this is a lot of times why I build these separate piece by piece in the bend that I want, because I find it hard to turn something like this and not lose the uh, the form that I want. So I'm thinking there needs to be another part that can bend right through here. This can be more of a, a bone protruding from the skin. Something like that. And then to make that bend, we could probably just take the lasso tool, go like this, tap it a couple times, and let's reverse it. And then let's go to, should I go to rotate? Where's that darn gizmo? I think that gizmo would just pop up wherever you're at, not where you last were. I don't know. Call me crazy. All right, so now if I rotate these, they do nothing. Oh, it's unlocked, isn't it? Lock it. And if I rotate these and then move them inward, up, no, getting all sorts of funkiness. Let's try that again. It seems like that's the right thing though. What about if I scale them? It just pulls them inward. a little better. It's still not what I was entirely after. Yeah, see, I don't know if that'll be worth it for the end result. I, I feel like it's not looking the way that I wanted. Let me check them by comparison to the other ones. Well, they don't look as bad now like that, but they're still kind of thin and oddly shaped for what I was looking for. You know what? I don't mind it as much as I thought. They look kind of creepy, which is cool. 
So yeah, I would just do that to the rest of them. I would finish out the scales, keep working on the rib cage. I'm not gonna carry this through too awful long. It's already 50 minutes, but hopefully this gives you an idea. And then what you can do, you can start poly painting this. You can define different surfaces, um, like the eyes and the teeth. I would uh, go back in and really sculpt out the teeth even further. But keep in mind, if you don't wanna build the extra teeth, you don't necessarily have to. I mean, I probably would, but another way is just to kind of keep pushing in with the Damien standard like this. And then you can either mo move or inflate or both uh, the skin around it. And you can get some pretty uh, good looking teeth, but it just takes a little bit more work doing that. Um, it probably even makes sense to sculpt them down first, build the tooth up, then push these back around it. So let me show you what I mean here real quick. So if you inflate this around it, it starts to pull those together. See that little bit of an overlap you start getting? I think I already explained that, didn't I? But you can you can make it look like a tooth that way. Um, a lot of times I will just build it separate. A little more control there. So again, same thing with this. I would push this in pretty far with the Damien Standard brush. Get those little bumps and, so, you know, also you don't want it all to be too consistently the same. So yeah, just kind of play around with that and then come back with the Inflate brush. And likewise, a little bit of move. Get all sorts of cool wrinkles going on here with this. I feel like even the eyes might. Creepy. And then you can uh, play around with some different renders. Go into your render options here. Let's see what it looks like best. But I, I generally um, would take this into Blender and add some different light sources, some renders, and play around with it. A couple more things real quick. So I'm going to push in this area right here. So I'd probably extend this rib cage yeah, right through you know those details of the rib cage right through here. Now the only thing too is is when you go to make these bigger edits you really do want to do this at the lower polygons um, because it's harder to smooth and blend and add and take away. Like, so it, planning your work is, is a big deal. Um, I'm not the best at that. I'm just, you know, for any of you that are really trying to understand this to a better degree, uh, that is something to be aware of. That's where using subdivisions can be a lot more effective. Okay, so, and, and what I do generally is I, I would divide this again or I would go up to a higher resolution and I'd really start adding in the, the tinier, tighter details which really kind of pushed this over the edge. But let me show you the, the scales because I totally forgot about some of the cool brushes that are already in here. So I'm sitting here doing this the wrong way really. Um, this particular brush right, I just saw it, right here uh, is super cool. So let me show you how you could introduce that to one of your creature concepts. So just by simply dragging across, you get these really nice looking scales, right? So you're gonna scale up the brush to the size you want. And then if you press harder 
in a given area, you're going to get more depth. So let me show you. Like, I mean, that by itself looks pretty neat. Uh, I actually kind of doubled up the texture, though. Let me try to do it without doing that. So what I mean is, like, maybe start light through here and then press really hard. Yeah, see, it's doubling up, I thought. Let me scale that up a little more. There we go. So just by pressing harder, and I'm sure if I messed around with the Z intensity, I could get that a bit better. You're actually getting depth pushed into that mesh, which is super cool. Now, test that out, because I'm not sure if you'd want to do that at this stage or at a you know more detailed stage of the work. Uh, what, what's also neat about this, but what I like more after testing this, I like by holding all the negative that you get. Actually, for the creature that I was or for this particular creature, I would rather see this. I mean, that, that just looks, I don't know, creepier. So I think it's cooler. So I would probably go with that. And then just kind of play around with, uh, you know, ways that you would use it. And then get it to blend in your existing work. Maybe do the reversal on the tail. Or the raised version on the tail. Yeah, I don't know. I like that, uh. I like that effect right there. So I'm going to hold Alt, go lightly across the rib cage, and then I would blend it up to here. And I would just compensate or or do more of the detail up on the face by hand, but use you know maybe a little bit of the scaling right through there, you know, just kind of hints of it. And then I would detail the rest, like I said, by hand. I would definitely probably add it. Definitely probably. I would definitely add it. To the bottom and what's neat I think about effects like this is that it can kind of just help you fill in the gaps of areas that you're you know you just need a little bit more information I'd probably do a different texture right through the bottom of the tail at least so I would do this texture all through here obviously play around with different sizes because a, a, a little bit larger might work better and I'd stop right about there and then across the bottom, maybe like a dragon belly kind of transition or a uh, snake belly kind of transition. But you can see that just like that, that added a lot to the concept. You know, it made it look a lot cooler. Uh, and you can mix up these details as well. So there's some, and I can't remember where because I haven't used this in a while. But there's some that have like little bumps, little dots, little imperfections. Uh, and as soon as I learn how to make these, I'll, I'll share more on the channel because they are super cool. I mean, look at this one. Look at that. Just, just some of these brushes are insane. Uh, and then past that, I would just do some poly paint or for a quick effect, we could just get in here and play around with some different colors. Yikes. Get rid of the light box up there. Or oh, wait, let's get rid of this brush here. Not liking that one. Hold on, let's find. Ooh, shiny chromie fish. Monster thing. Double shade. That's kind of neat. I really want something that looked specular. I guess that kind of does look wet, but it looks too metallic. Right? All right, let's do a quick uh, render, see if it looks any better. But yeah, again, I use this more for a way to generate ideas, loosen up, uh, stay creative. I don't know. For me, personally, this stuff is great for sparking creativity. And then I go back and I seem to draw better. I know that might sound weird, but it's the truth for me. And I guess we're all a bit different, so you got to see what works for you. But... Like when I sat down to do something, I didn't expect to come up with a creature like this, right? And I'm not saying it's some great creature design, but it was fun. It's it's something that's new to me, and it just started as a, you know, just a spitball idea. I don't know. I think that is a great way to spark creativity, and I, I, I actually love doing this. Uh, so I'll do more of these. Let me know what you think of today's video and what else you want to see on the channel. I'll make sure to do that. And thanks for your support. 
Good luck with your art and stay creative.